Kathy New York is from the Webster Museum, and my friend Kathy Taddeo got in here before me, thank goodness, and set up all the tables. So I want you to see our dedicated museum member. So anyway, um, History in a Cup has been going on for a few years, and we've been doing residents who grew up in Webster, and they come up here and tell the story, and people come and do what these people are doing now. And uh, so this year, when we heard the town got a, whatever, million dollars or more, to fix up the hamlet of West Webster, we thought, woo, we better get our history together, you know. Possibly, how do you get your hands on that million dollars? I know, no, no, no. <laughs> this is up to you guys. You guys got to all keep an eye on it now. What we're doing is stir stirring up the spirit of West Webster. We know, I lived in West Webster for 30 years, so it's not anything compared to you. But um, I know, I didn't know the village was here <laughs> when I lived in West Webster, and the West Webster, the village didn't know West Webster was there either. And I don't think the town did either, did they? <laughs> well, I don't think we they were, still do. We were <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. We had our own zip code, right? One, one, yes, one. Yeah. yeah. And we always said we're from West Webster, right? Not just Webster. We used to address our envelopes. Yeah, right, mm -hmm. right. Yeah. So um, there was, there is history there, and there's a lot of it. And the gals put together the exhibit with all the pictures and stuff like that to bring back memories, and to help you share your memories. And uh, that's the reason we're here today. This is our last one. We had one on Sunday where we had a panel of people sitting up here from West Webster, and then a whole bunch of people came and, you know, exchanged back and was forth. There, was there talk, excuse me, of buying bread at that meeting? No. No, okay. Yeah. So, but a lot about the West Webster Fire Department. So, you're well you're remembered. Your yeah. Yeah, you've done a lot in keeping that community together. Always busy, the women's auxiliary, and the men did their job too. So as a fireman, helping and um, keep the community going. The bands, the parades. Limburger cheese sandwiches, oh, yeah. turkey the, the, the turkey oh, yeah. wrap was the best. <laughs> so, so this is what it, we brought these guys in. Dave Davis is from West Webster and grew up there, and he was a fireman all his life, right? Most of your life. I'm a life member of West Webster. Yeah, and he was the fire chief at one time too. And then Bob, I don't know much about you. No, I'm, I stay hidden. <laughs> Right. So Bob grew up in West Webster and was born in the house that he still now lives in. So he's going to tell his story too and memories. And um, I hope you all share your memories with them too. So it's a give and take and open forum. So enjoy yourselves. Okay? <laughs> Hi everyone. Hi. My name is, like you said, Dave Davis. And uh, a lot of people don't know me by that name. They know me as Frag or Fraggy. That's how I know you. So, <laughs> see, there we go. There's a few people, they don't even know my real name. But if you mention Frag or Fraggy, well, not just in West Webster, but in our whole county. How did you get they, that name? That's, I'll tell you. Okay. <laughs> when I was about eight years old, I rode the same school bus as our past uh, police officer, Paul Hill. And uh, <clears throat> Dick uh, Dow, Richard Dow, who lived on Clem Road, Paul Hill lived on the end of Five Mile, or Maple Drive. And on the school bus, he says, we're going to call it, you're going to be our blood brother, and your name is Frag. We're going to call you Frag. Well, it stuck. <laughs> I was eight years old. But if, you remember Paul Hill, the police officer? I think you ended up being a lieutenant in the police department. He was one of the first few police after Ralph Pinkney, who was the chief of police back in the day. Him and Gilly Kunzer. 
Right. <clears throat> so anyway, uh, I moved to West Webster in 1943. That was during World War uh, II. I was uh, six years old. And uh, I went to kindergarten at the Rochester City School number 42, which was in the town of Greece. Did you ever hear of the Greece Free School District? They made a deal with Kodak because Kodak wanted, it was in Greece, but the Greece couldn't have sewers and utilities enough for them. So they made a deal with the city furnished utilities for Kodak. And where we lived at the time, you didn't have to pay school taxes, but you went to a city school. Well, when I moved here, I was in the first grade. And I was six years old in 1943, and my teacher was Mrs. Todd. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Mrs. Todd taught grades one and two. There was eight grades and four teachers. Each teacher taught uh, two classes, and that was in the old West Webster School. That's before they centralized. It was district number four the four-room schoolhouse. They used that building for quite a while later for kindergartens and different things over the years. But it caught on fire in the early sep uh, 70s. Excuse me. And that's another story. But we stopped the fire. High pressure fog with coal mire and a couple guys on the line. And uh, they saved the building from that, but then it, it, they were using it for a workshop. It was an arson job because they'd spread oil from the workshop all through the place. But we got it right away. And I happened to be at Slices right down the road getting cigars. <laughs> when the call came in, and I was there right away, and uh, I smoked cigars for about, I never smoked cigarettes, but cigars, I used to uh, smoke those. And uh, I actually chewed it more than I smoked. Yeah. But, uh, I got to a few auto wrecks, and there was gasoline all over, and he says, there's the fire chief, he's the guy with a cigar. <laughs> the gasoline all over, but the cigar wasn't lit. But anyway, uh, it was like a pacifier. So anyway, I got to that fire, and it finally collapsed the building because the roof went bad, and it, it, it's collapsed now. But that's where I went to school, up until the uh, fifth grade. And then, in the fifth grade, we moved from the four corners. We, I lived three houses from the corner of Gravel Road and Ridge, where later Dick Hayes lived at Wards. And uh, so we built a house down on Gravel Road. It was about a mile down. That's where we moved next. So I didn't live right on the four corners anymore, but I was still involved in the community. And uh, that's another story which will take too long, how we got down in Gravel Road. <laughs> but uh, anyway, when we were still on the Four Corners, a few things happened. Oh, then we went to school number two down at, at Van Alstein Road in Clem. But there was no teacher there. That was a one-room schoolhouse. The school bus picked us up there and took us up to the high school up here. Uh, until a few years later when they centralized, then the bus picked us up in different places. And we used to go to Hembrooks, down to Mrs. Hembrooks. And Mrs. Dobelair, who lived near us, we lived halfway down. She'd take us in her Buick down to Hembrooks. And Mrs. Hembrook would bring us in the house when it was cold and give us hot ch chocolate till the school bus came. And that was the days. Everybody knew everybody else. Couldn't get away with too much. So anyway, at that school, we had a, a school band. And my sister and I, we took clarinet lessons. And our family didn't have a lot of money, so we had one clarinet, we shared it. And because I couldn't read or read music, I, she did a lot better than I did. And so she ended up being the leader of the Webster Village Band here way back when, Diane David, oh, Curtis, her name, married name was. 
which is another name. So she took over the clarinet, and I, I got out of that. But we used to have our own band. The other thing they had was at Christmas time, they had a, a, a gathering where the people would come and see the kids play music instruments and go have a little play. And sometimes we had that at the Methodist Church, right in the main part of the church, because the school wasn't big enough, but the audience wasn't. Because that was in the, <clears throat> the band operated, and there was a little stage in the basement, the old stone basement in the back. And uh, that's about it on the school. As far as the church, my parents never went to church, but they sent my sister and me uh, <laughs> down to the Methodist church on Sunday morning. And uh, that's about enough on that. I told you that. <laughs> uh, oh, the, I know the concerts is what I, the word I was going to use for the band, the basement. I told them, oh, the Christmas decorations. At, at Christmas, we used to make chains that went from one corner to the other and up to the lights and all of that. You put these little loops of colored paper and glue them together. That was fun. We had a lot of social uh, activities <laughs> at the school, and that was fun. And I talked about the church, the post office. We had a post office, and we had a postmaster, Hank Sprague, his name was. And, uh, but I learned something looking at these pictures. I didn't realize the first post office was in uh, the Statsky building, which was later Machetes, and I think it was uh, Getzman's. Getzman's. Was the, where the firehouse was, that big place on the corner, that was Getzman's general store yeah. originally. Yeah. Yeah. Then they moved in that little building behind it that was a post office. They were, Getzman's were still there when I went and got candy for Penny over there. <laughs> uh, <coughs> the Penny, the, you could pick out your own. And uh, that was fun. Oh, in the firehouse. When I was young, I used to go to the firehouse. The door was always open. And I'd go in the firehouse and I'd get on the old Lincoln, 1937 Lincoln, <laughs> or the 35 Ford that we have now. I'd get there, I'd ring the bell, I'd, <clears throat> I'd pretend I'm driving. I was a little six-year-old kid, nobody bothered me. <laughs> everybody trusted everybody else, and if you did get in trouble, they all knew it. <laughs> and so then, that, that was fun. And uh, Earl Slagle was a chief for 25 years, and I was a chief in the 1970s. I was only the sixth chief in 50 years. And uh, before Earl Schlegel, who was 21 when he joined, he was active for 40 years, was wow. Chief Lewis Volk. Lewis Volk happened to, uh, they built their own fire truck, West Webster, on that old Federal, the 28 Federal, the pictures over here of the that. That was actually built by the firemen. And uh, he built the first brand new fire truck that we still have. He built it? He built it. Yeah. He started a company, the Rochester Fire Equipment Company. And he was doing such a good job that the city of Rochester bought out his business and took him in as an employee and made him a deputy chief of the Rochester Fire Department oh. where he built the trucks for Rochester during war, World War II and you couldn't get a fire truck. Wow. And there's a couple pictures of those original trucks in our firehouse museum, but that was Louis Volk. And then the other thing about the fire department... And he was around. the first fire chief? He was the first fire chief. Okay. He was chief for 15 years. Oh, okay. That's why I got to be only the sixth chief. There weren't too many chiefs back then. Did he do they, construction? I don't think so. I don't know other than... I, I yeah. met him. I've yeah. met him, but I've never got to really know him. I knew Earl Schlegel was still chief when I joined in 1965. By the way, when I turned 18 years old, I lived in the village here. That's after we moved around a little bit. And I worked at Finn's Garage next door. Oh, cool. So I, I could have, that was my full-time job for three years. I worked ten years How after that part How much did you make an hour? Well, I don't want to tell you. <laughs> <laughs> you couldn't even... Not only buy a hamburger, you couldn't even buy a, a glass of pop nowadays for what I mean. Yeah. But anyway, those were the old days. Well, gasoline was like 
22 cents <laughs> a gallon. And in this building was uh, Click's garage. Uh, and then his son was a funeral director over here. And uh, anyway, I could have joined the Webster Fire Department, but I had no interest at 18 years old. And Wes Webster had been 21, but I was 27 when I finally joined. Because what happened is after we moved a few times, my wife and I got married and we moved to the city of Rochester. We stayed there for about six or eight months, and then we moved to Fairford. And then we, I decided I could scratch up enough money to buy a house, so guess where I wanted to go? Back to West Webster, the second house in the corner. And uh, <clears throat> it used to be a doctor's house originally, that house. The first doctor, at least West Webster, if not Webster. Oh, what was his name? That I'd like to know. It was on oh. a sign in my barn that burned down. Oh. <laughs> but anyway, uh, yeah, that's some history. Have, um, Webster through the years? I don't know. I have to look. Yeah, I think it's in there. Yeah, Is it? On, uh, but anyway, we moved there, and I lived there for quite a while. And I joined the fire department, like I say. I went up through the ranks. But uh, back to the fire department, back in my father, it was Earl Slegel chief. Next door was Tony Tong. Tony Tong, his name I think was Clarence, but they called him Tony. He was the assistant chief. They, that, and then they had some other officers. Well then, the second house in the corner on the south side was Bill Lewis. And the next house was ours. George Davis, my father's name was. He had a plumbing business. And do you remember the party lines? You call in a fire on the party, uh, you call up, if you got a fire, you call the operator. We got a fire, whatever it is. Okay? The next thing the operator does, she calls Earl Slegel, the chief, or his, his mother, the hat, was on the phone, too. <laughs> well, guess what? It was a party line. So we got the phone ring. When Earl Slegel's phone rang after 10 o'clock at night, they wait till he picked up. And my father, Bill Lewis, and they'd pick up the phone, and they'd hear the call come in right away. Yeah. Uh, but the other firemen, when they, then they'd run over to the firehouse, push the button on the front, the siren would go off. That would uh, alert all the firemen. And then the firemen that didn't live near the firehouse hear the siren, they call the operator. They, they give them a code like May Day or June Bug or something like that. Then the operator knew it was a fireman, and they give them the, the operator give them the location of the fire. And now, when I joined the fire department, we had one of these things. This is called a home receiver. And usually you put it on top of the refrigerator. And they set off the tones from uh, 911, but that was even before it was 911. And that radio goes off and tells you where the fire is. And if you come up to our museum, we got a whole... Uh, display case full of all the different radios over time. Well, it used to be this size down to about that big, and then it got down to a little page you wore on your belt. <laughs> and nowadays, I'm not an active fireman, but most of the firemen don't even need to carry a pager. They got a smartphone. <laughs> <laughs> Their phone goes off and there's a fire call to tell them where it is. <laughs> Modern technology. <laughs> so that's it. Uh, well, we don't want to time. I want to leave enough time for Bob. Bob, you could cut did, in any time. Did you tell us how you got the nickname Frog? Froggy. I did. Oh, okay. <laughs> I must have. Been Paul there. Hill and yes. uh, Dick Dow on the school bus gave me that oh. name at eight years old and it stuck. Yeah, but he okay. had it through oh. the firehouse too, but also racing because he was a race car driver. That's not so. Wes Webster. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to. It's not about me. It's about Wes Webster. Cause I had to tell you a few things about what I did. I pretty well covered the school and then the post office. The post office, it was, like I said, over there, it was in the Mira block, where Ed Muir's plumbing shop was, and my father's plumbing shop was or in the building, too. Well, that, that, building, that building during World War II was a machine shop. They had a big motor about this big yeah. that ran belts yeah. overhead, and I didn't, was too young then to know, but they were like lathes and milling machines. And, all that, all this machinery. They were building the war product of World War II mm -hmm. in that building. What were they building? Huh? Wait, what were they building? 
parts for the war. Oh, okay. <coughs> it could be for guns or jeeps or whatever. Machine. They had to machine parts for the, they made parts there. And uh, that same building, later on, uh, Gordon Walters, who lived on the corner of, uh, <coughs> he lived on the corner of Hatch Road, yeah. Ridge Road, where that uh, new country max is, that farm there. And uh, he had stored his cabbage in that building. <laughs> Used it like a barn. And then later on, the post office was in that building when I first. Right. Moved. It was there when I, I can remember. The that, I don't remember when office. it was in uh, Statsky's. <laughs> no, I, I don't was. either. I remember it in Judy's family's house on the east or the west end of that. Yeah. Long strip. Right, on because the west end. Next to that was... Or what? There was... Go ahead, but No, no, go ahead. No, I want you to go It's all over. It was all over the... I mean, how many post offices is it? Oh, Look at it now. Crazy. They're, they're all over the place. <laughs> Wait a minute. Western, there's like six different... We locations. don't have a post office in no, West we don't. I mean, but... They've got a building that was in yeah. sites and then it moved that's in the gas station. Yeah. That's not the West Webster post right. office. Oh, that's, no. that's not even the Webster post office. They're contracted with the Webster Post Office. Oh. It's a branch of the Webster Post Office. Right. We used to have our own post office. We yep. took away our identity. The only thing we got left was the fire department. Even the Heritage House isn't there oh, anymore. <laughs> that used to be part of our identity. It was part of our identity. I don't know that name. Okay, Earl Slago, telephone. Talk about, talk about how you delivered the papers and how you made a cart to do it. The oh, so that, that's apart. later on when I moved away from the corner there. Glenn, Glenn by the way, is my son over here. Oh, the carnival. We used to have carnival. Oh, the carnival. And they had a big carnival before my time where uh, Empire or Moscow and all of that was. Mm -hmm. In that whole block before those buildings were built. Oh, wow. And yeah. where the drive-in movie was they actually gave airplane rides and there is a picture someplace I don't know if it's here or not but of that carnival grounds from the airplane and then when I was a little kid yet about eight years old in the corner my father ran the hot dog stand at the carnival when it was next to the firehouse and Joe Dor, Joe Dor ran the pop stand so I always worked in the pop stand. I think a hot dog was 20 cents and the pop was 10 cents. And then I go, you could go over there after the carnival the next day and you could look for a few dimes. They've been strapped under there. To the beer, the beer All table. around yeah. the beer <laughs> table. <laughs> that, that was a little bonus right there. But anyway, we used to have our own carnival. Back then, the Webster Fire Department, right out here on the street, had a carnival. It was just on the street. It was something like a Park Avenue Festival with a few tents on the side. They didn't have the rides and all that stuff. And the skating rink. We had the skating rink. Still, when I was the fireman, then they got the one down there by the high school. But we used to flood the rink. And West Webster firemen used to be involved quite a bit with the community. They had a Christmas party for the kids. And they got candy, they got an orange, some got a present. And sometimes they had figure skaters, professional figure skaters and race skaters uh -huh. on the skate rink. Yeah. They'd be all yeah. around there, and around they go, <coughs> having a great time. Well, the skating rink was just absolutely great, because the, the kids in the neighborhood would help my dad when it was his turn to flood it. Yeah. And we had no idea the power that was in the hose, and my dad was a little guy. And all of us kids jumped off the hose, and he went up in the air. <laughs> oh my, he couldn't get up down fast enough, and he right. never yelled at us. I think I you were a bay, weren't was... you? A bay? Yeah. Beauty. Yeah. I thought so. Yeah. I Stan remember when we right. were here before. Yes, yes. Her, her father ran a plumbing shop. Yep. And that same building my father was in with his plumbing shop, and yep. later at yeah. Mira. Yep, and then at. Plumbers like that building. I don't, I don't know if nothing, he ever owned it. Basement had nothing but shelves down there. It went down into the hole. Right. Got, well, you know, my, dad, my dad made a, um, a fallout shelter thing down in the, in the basement. Yes. 
Really? Yeah, remember, yes. So you must have been canned, during that yeah, time. Canned goods and all this stuff we had down there. Yeah, it was exciting. There was a lot of exciting things. It was, it was, it was a different. <laughs> I, I, yeah. I don't know. I never felt scared about it. It was always fun. During yeah. World War II, they used to blow the siren and you had to, had to pull your shades down. Yeah. Yes. Dark shades. You had dark green shades don't shut the lights off. Yeah. Did you have someone in West, in West Webster that would walk around and make sure your shades were down? I don't remember that. Oh, okay. I don't either. Yeah. I don't remember that. But that's another thing. And we had the civil defense. Our oh, siren was hooked up to civil defense. And we had, I think, cots and different things at the firehouse. Yeah. We could set up. In fact, one time... We brought cots up here to Xerox. We had a big storm. This was in like the 70s, 60s or 70s. We brought the cots up so people could sleep at Xerox. They couldn't get out, out of their car. To go <coughs> we brought them out of the old schoolhouse. Yeah, that's right. And by snowmobile over to where the new one is being built and put it on the trucks <coughs> and then took them to Xerox. There. Remember that, Bob? Yeah. Yes, I do. I got to tell the truth because Bob's a Barrett was a very active. Fireman. We had to have somebody at the end of the hose that we thought we could <laughs> <laughs> was a fireman. Inside man. And then we got Rick over here. He's a Webster fireman, but he's keeping an eye on him. We got Dan Van Dorn, and he used to do our welding and make some special parts. That you and the little babies. And <laughs> he's a, so I got a lot, and then I got family. I can't, I got to tell the truth. Let's <laughs> see. And then during World War II, there was... Don Cusey. Do you remember Don yeah, Cusey? I remember Don. Don yeah. Cusey was related to the Gleasons. Yeah. Well, he used to test drive the, the bombers out of Niagara Falls Airport, yeah. oh my the God. military airport. Well, he, do you remember flying over the wires? How about 25 or 50 foot above the wires and trees, yeah. right down through West Webster, yeah. this bomber comes. <laughs> you do that about every month when you happen to be in the neighborhood. <laughs> Hank Cuiabo used to do it every now and then. Hank Cuiabo would run the helicopters too. Okay. Skating ring. Oh, the turkey party. Remember the turkey party? Somebody mentioned the Limburger cheese. We ran that. And one, I was chief of four terms, so. I got to run the turkey party twice. And actually, they thought I was crazy because the price of turkeys, everything was going up. It used to be 25 cents a ticket. Yes. Okay? And there was 100, 120 numbers on the, on the ticket, but you got two, two numbers. I says, well, we can't make change and all that. I says, we're going to double it. We're going to make it 50 cents. Oh, they can't do that. Yeah, but we're going to give them three numbers. <laughs> now, instead of one out of 60, one out of 40 wins, and they sell faster, we sold 700 turkeys. We had to get them from Hagedorn. Oh, my Remember goodness. Remember that year? <laughs> the, the reason the, <clears throat> the turkey party stopped, it was a good fundraiser. We used to make about $10,000 oh, about wow. three hours. Yeah. Well, the reason it stopped, we ran an ambulance for years. Which this is the first year we haven't had an ambulance, but that's politics. We're not going to get into that too much. <laughs> but uh, we decided the beer was free, the Limburger cheese, and all that. And we're the fire department. They started cracking down on drinking and all that stuff. And we got thinking, here we are. We're getting the person drunk, and then we're going to be picking them up on the ambulance and all afterwards. <laughs> so we thought it was starting to be poor publicity because there was a few people. That had too many, and if they didn't get enough beer, they'd go across to the Heritage House and finish it off. So that's why, I think, wasn't that why we stopped the turkey party? Yeah, yeah. The, the liability. Was insurance. The liability. Yeah. Insurance companies. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I invite everybody to come up to West Webster. It's a Tuesday night, there's firemen there. A lot of times the building's locked. Since they've had all these killings and all that stuff, with the new firehouse, you have to have a a bob to get a fireman in there. You just can't walk in. If you get in the entrance, of one, you got to call the secretary upstairs to get in the place now. I'm a bob that I can't get in. Well, they didn't like the bob. Yeah, wait a minute. Can I have one of these things? This little thing right here. If you don't have one, you can get you one bob. But anyway, that's that. The turkey part of the skating ring. Oh, yeah.
But I'm going to give Bob a chance, a half hour or something. Well, can you finish about the museum? How do we get to see the museum? Oh, the museum? <laughs> Actually, I can give you my number, or you can call Al Sinko, which there's a few people you can call, and uh, come and see it. Or if you want the scout group to come, or this and that. Yeah. It's a work in progress. Oh, okay. so oh but it's fantastic. It's not man. And you, yeah. the other thing about Wes Webster, we talk about taxes. <clears throat> we talk about money. Yeah, they got a couple million dollar budget. That one ladder truck that's sitting there cost over a million dollars. Yes. Just one truck. Yes. All the volunteer firemen bought all the trucks up until 1963. Mm -hmm. Out of Money they raised, I and mean, the turkey parties, yep. the punch things. I got my Boy Scout uniform by going out and setting, remember the punch cards they had that yep. were illegal? <laughs> yep. A few people told me that. I sold those, and you could either get a turkey or $10. I think if you sold the board, and somebody won a turkey, and you got a, either a turkey or a board. And I, that's how I got money for my Boy Scout uniform when I was about 12. But uh, that's another thing. You used to go house to house, too. House to house. Yeah. Well, that's what I did. Remember that? I remember. Oh, we, oh the, the fun drive. We used to go out house to house. It, the district got big, but what I started to tell you, because I'm losing my train of thought. <laughs> West Western, <laughs> when you call up 911, we don't have the AMs. We were having like 3,000 calls a year. That's a lot of calls. Yeah. Did you know we don't have one paid fireman? People think, oh, yeah. we got paid. We're still 100% Wow, that for you. West Western. And they were running 3,000 calls a year with the animals, so we needed help. And it got into politics and all that, but there is right now a Penfield ambulance in our firehouse because the town trumped us. We, we put it out for bids and all that stuff. They have help. Penfield came in with a good deal. Penfield was going to run all of West Webster. That's the deal we made at no cost to us. We were just letting them put the... Well, the town got involved with this oh. northeast quadrant and politics and this and that. They took, they trumped us. They took over the ambulance business. Mm -hmm. yeah. We no longer, they put us right out of business like they did Union Hill. Mm -hmm. And Union Hill ended up losing their fire department because that was their fund. Yes. <clears throat> but you, it's illegal up until about a month ago for the fire department to charge for ambulance. Mm -hmm. A volunteer ambulance can, but not a fire department. Exactly. We still do emergency calls, Web, like Webster does. If somebody's got a heart attack, a back a bad accident, we're, we're going to send one of the old chief's cars there with first aid equipment. They're going to help out, but we're not going to take you to the hospital. That's one thing that's spoiled. The other thing is, it used to be it take you about an hour to run in the Northside Hospital. Mm. Now the calls take way over two hours. All the paperwork. Ridiculous. Yeah. And so this one guy said, I said well, we still got 100, over 100 members. Can't we divide it up? The guy who was on duty one night, he told me I was on three calls last night. He didn't get any sleep at all because he's done out two hours. Then I couldn't hardly work the next day. That's why we had to give up, up the ambulance. But before we did, Pendrick was going to do it until the town got Now you're going to get it. The town of Webster ambulance. Is what you're going to get, and they're going to charge you. Oh, yeah. do they charge? Oh, yeah, that's my oh, question. Yeah. How much? Yeah. About eight hundred dollars. Oh, that's ridiculous. Right. It's, it's terrible. And we did it for free Absolutely. for all them years. Between and eight and twelve hundred dollars, depending if they do it. It's eight hundred dollars if they take you to the hospital. Yeah. If they do anything along the way, it's, it's a lot more. It's an in. Well, we well, people were getting charged even with our ambulance because of the paramedic from. If yep. a paramedic shows up from the Northeast Quadrant, yes. they charge through us. We don't get a penny of it. Yes. They get the money, not us. Okay, Dave, get it. no more politics? <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't going to get Wait a minute. Uh, stop me before I start swearing. <laughs> Bob, do you have anything show. else to take? <laughs> anyway, I think I covered it. Oh, no. You just about covered it, really. <laughs> well, I wanted to make sure I was honest. But it jogged my memory, some of these pictures I yeah. hadn't seen myself. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of my head. But. Come up and visit us up in West Webster, and we're a work in progress, like I said. And Lyle and I, we fixed up that old 35 Ford back in the 60s that Louisville built. And it's still in our museum. 
In they fact, Lyle and I, we took that all the way, drove it to Albany, all, all, all the way to Albany to a state parade at 1935 Ford. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> That'd be about 450 miles. I used to polish that thing. My dad was a fireman. Oh, my goodness. We had we were, fun over there. <laughs> that was fun. Yeah. It was. And, <laughs> yep. oh, there's one other thing I, I was going to say about it, other than the animals. But if I think about it, I'll let you know. <laughs> Any questions? Because Bob's going to tell you all the rest. <laughs> Hell of a guy, isn't he? <laughs> okay, I've said enough. Oh, thanks, I covered a half an hour. I'll give you 25 minutes left, Bob. <laughs> if you run over, I'm going to let you know. Well, the, the hardest part of that is, Frank, you just about covered it, didn't you? <laughs> did a good job. I'm Bob Ryan. I was born in 41, right here in... Uh, West Webster. Uh, went to kindergarten across the street at the little old one back there. Me and the dog went down there and back every day. Uh, then grammar school, went to Holy Trinity with Judy. Went all through school with Judy. <laughs> and uh, it was fun. Then I, I didn't go to Webster school. Then I went to McQuaid opened. I went to McQuaid for four years. Went there. But uh, it was a lot of fun. West Webster was just everybody knew everybody. You knew every family. You know, you went out just like they say in the paper. You know, you went out on your bike and you stayed out all day and come back for supper. And that was always it. Uh, back in the 50s, <coughs> late 40s, when TV started, I can remember the first TV I ever saw walked down to the corner, peeked through the window, because <laughs> Judy's dad yeah, had a TV in there, yeah. and all the kids would look through the window <laughs> and watch TV. <laughs> God, it was funny. Well, that was the first one I ever saw. Then. Yeah, yeah. It was probably this small, right? Oh. But yeah, yeah, it was, it was about, that, yeah, the little, that first. Like that, yeah. And it flipped and flipped yeah. and Oh, yeah, you got out there screwing with the things in the back trying to get it to stop. Yeah. But, uh, and then Frog was talking about the post offices. Yeah. Like, and I remember the one at the end of the day. I didn't know if anybody else did because I never heard too much about it. But I can remember it in the, the Bay, what they call it, Bay Brothers. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But uh, I can remember that in the, in the corner of that for just, I think it was just the little pull boxes I think they had in there. Yeah, you could mail a letter by yeah, stamps. And that was about it. Yeah. They had a little pop belly stole, you remember that thing and the letter there. didn't burn down. And then <laughs> next to that, or right after that, Mrs. Woodcock had a little bright a little store in there. We had all little glass ornaments and things like that. Because I think my grandfather wanted some give me a nickel and send me down there to let me buy something for Mother's Day or something like that through that. And because she yeah. lived down gravel, right, I think yes. like the third house down or so, yeah. or maybe where that lawyer lives it. now and there's yeah. a yeah. daycare center. Back in there, and cause they, she moved that little bit of uh, uh, glass gallery stuff into the back building in there. And I remember going back there. It was, it was cute in that, and the town with songs and slagles. Right. You know. Eddie Burr, senior. He yes. was their main He lived butcher. down in North Avenue. He was, Avenue, butcher. But he was, he was butcher. a butcher. He was a butcher. used to bring the... Tell him how we used to pay. Do you remember that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. My mother, mother. Yeah, my ahead. father, he used to, or my mother, we'd go over, we, we, we didn't have a refrigerator, we had an ice box. Yeah. Right. You had to go down and get a, a brick of ice. It was an ice man. In fact, Race Newark was an ice man down on Clem Road. And he later, on, he had a landscape business and worked for Hill Haven doing their work. Well, we used to have to go down by Lake Road and get a big block of ice. You put it on the bumper of your car and put ice in it. So you bought perishables almost daily. And they'd mark everything down on a list. Remember that, Bob? Yep. Yeah, and then they tallied up, but we had no money. 
so it'd just be on the it'd be on the pad. Yes. And then when my father got paid for a plumbing job, he'd go in and settle up. Yeah. 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 That's the way it was. Yeah, it was always like that. <laughs> my uh, son and uh, daughter-in-law, they went to school up in Vermont. And it was so, back in, what was that, the 90s, late 90s? No, 2000, like 2000, 2000, 2000, 2000. 2000. The, and that, the, where they worked up there, and they had a, a little... The, what was the, the Barnard General Barnard store, General store. Store. They had this huge old ledger that you opened up, and they just still to that day were writing things in there, uh -huh. <laughs> and then you paid for it whenever. It's amazing. Where did you uh, have your first job? My first job was <coughs> Judy Bay would know her Judy. <laughs> she always be Judy Bay. Still Judy Bay. <laughs> Uh, was <clears throat> working down at, uh, we'd go down to Gordon Walters, yep. and where Country Max is now, oh, yeah. all sour cherry trees. Yep. Oh, and that's where we picked cherries. <laughs> we, the yep. first day, we just threw cherries at each other and tried to eat until you got sick. We didn't make anything. And then uh, after that, you actually started to make, <laughs> put them in the bins. Yep. Uh, and there, Actually making money. That was yeah, started making money. That was, I mean, that was like when you're 14, you could get a yeah. farm you permit. Could do that, huh? Yeah. Yeah. And uh, then we take them from there and go down into Webster, down yeah. in Commercial Street to the, yeah. and they process them there. Mm -hmm. and then on the way back, Our usually reason. stop at uh, like was it Hagedorn's you know, on the corner there of uh, Hardy. Yeah. At the ice cream parlor. Mm -hmm. In the corner house. That was fun. It was a lot of fun. Then, uh, then I worked for El Canable up on Crick Street, or on uh, Empire, by Smith Road, and past that up there. I worked there. That was, a, that was a good, that was fun. I drove tractor there. I was probably 14, whatever, because <laughs> you pick up strawberries. They had a big strawberry field all the way down Smith Road, right to the lake, oh, nice. or bay. And yeah, picked a lot of berries there. Yeah. My actual job was I worked for Yeager Electric for 34 years. Yeah. What year did you go to the service? Uh, service, 60, 64. Got drafted in 64. Yeah, I got free, two year, all oh, expense paid, room, board, everything you wanted. <laughs> <laughs> List for the fire department and went in at 66. Okay. Went in there. No? Wow. Went in there for a while. That was 65, so you're only, even though you're a few years younger, because yeah. I didn't get into 67. Yeah, I was 47. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was fun. What Great. happened to the barn on your property? They took it down. I got a picture of it here, so uh -huh. I'm going to leave it in the thing. They took it down when I was in the service. Uh, my mother had it taken down. Uh, uh, there were Mennonites come up out of Pennsylvania and took the whole thing down, board by board, wow. and all the hand hewed beams in that, and then built in a barn somewhere down in Pennsylvania. Oh my Redone, goodness. Redone, you know, parts of it. Because we used like, to play in the barn. It was yeah. big, it was yeah. four stories. Oh yeah. God, we used to play four in the Four stories? Yeah. yeah. Oh my Went goodness. Down yeah. underneath, and then up three. Yes. Did you bring a picture of it? Yes, I did. Yeah, oh, good. Yeah, we'll pass them around. Oh, please. Yeah, I know. 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 Yeah, up into the, the one one was left I can because I can remember one uh, died what? broke its leg and died yeah. fell through the floor and we had we had a little tractor at that time trying to get that thing out of there <laughs> all I can remember is the tires on that tractor spinning and spinning and spinning he buried in the back we dug a huge hole mm -hmm. about 20 years later I'm out there with a tractor and this going through a field and went boom. Oh, no. <laughs> right down in there. It took oh, me like God. four days to shovel it out <laughs> so I could drive the tractor out of there. <laughs> oh, Lord. Yeah, that's it. That was fun. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> but, uh, 
We had the West Webster. Well, we had. I can remember bringing the the steers and then up the alleyway yeah. to, to the store. They had a little ramp on the side door with a big ring inside it, and any bird. That's how you. Got your meat, hit it over the head with a sledgehammer. Yeah, no. Schlegel's <laughs> meat yeah. market. What? Wow, they sliced it right there? Yep, they did oh, everything goodness. right in the back. I mean, Eddie Burr was, you know, he was a butcher. You know, yeah. today, all the stores are meat cutters. Man, you know, yeah. they get chunks of meat and they know how to cut them up. But yeah. a butcher actually does the whole thing yeah, from the start. Where was that? Boy, that land is full yeah. of stuff. Yeah, full of stuff. Oh, it was yeah. fantastic. Yeah, yeah. the little Schlegel alleyway between Tongs and the yeah. and Schlegel's market. With Schlegel's, I used to go over with my little grocery list from my mother, mm -hmm. and I always, I was a tomboy, and I always wore like big coveralls and you know, and he'd hang me up on one of the hooks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And one, we just had more fun. Them all, but they went and got all the groceries and then take me off the hook. My granddad, my granddad gave me like five cents, yeah. send me down there yeah. to, to get a plug of beach and chewing tobacco. I walked down there when I was like yeah. maybe eight, nine years yeah. old. Walk down, walk back. Yeah. See yourself doing that today. <laughs> no, see, that's the difference. I liked when we grew up. Bob. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, we, uh, uh, Halloween, oh. we save all the tin cans. We and Mr. Schlegel would let us, I know. And what Tie them all together in the little alleyway between Tongs and, and uh, Schlegel's. Yeah. Sneak out around the back because it was a stop, stop yep. on the corner. The stop it was sign. just a stop sign. <laughs> and the cars that come up and the old cars had the bumpers in the back with the little points on them. Hook them cans Hook them over the cans top. Off. <laughs> and then run like that. <laughs> but Mrs. Schlegel, when they had the, the porch on the side yep. on Gravel Road, she let us. Hide on the porch, taking the darn cans on the car. Oh, I just. <laughs> that, that and, uh, what's it with Halloween? You give, she'd always give a nickel. Oh, always. Yes. Then when you run she over, was so sweet. you get the penny yeah. candy. But she would always, always, you knock yeah. on the door, she had nickels. Yep. She always got a nickel. Well, was she a rich person? Or? Uh, Nobody no, was she rich. Lived yeah. above the grocery no, she lived right, <coughs> right above it. Uh -huh. Schlegel's Market. Yeah. Where Schlegel's, there's a, there's a door on the side if you go down Gravel Road right there. Yeah. There was steps right there ahead of porch. There used to be a And nice she lived upstairs. Porch. The stairs went right upstairs yeah. from there. <laughs> that was good. That was a lot of fun back then. It was. But then they had the barn. You had, was it, uh, I can't remember the barn behind the heritage house. Oh. Frank, no, not uh, priest. No. Priest. 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 Frankie Priest. Yes. Yeah. Frankie Priest. Yeah. Guts. Yeah. 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 They used to call them Guts. Guts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we had that thing here. We could get a ladder and get up on the roof and hide and throw Apples and stuff. It. Oh, we did. <laughs> yes. Horrible. <laughs> my sister, they're older. That bunch yeah. with Joyce Slagle and yeah. my sister and all the rest of them. Well, Zimmer's lived on the corner. Yeah. Bruce yeah. Zimmer Bruce and then Bruce yeah. and then Charlene. Yeah. Charlene's on there. Yeah. And they. Yeah. Uh, Danny Slagle. Yeah. yeah. Danny. Gooby, Marty. Gooby, Your cousins. You were talking about the ice skating rink. I can still remember when oh. Charlie Wenzel, oh. Bell and Goobies. He <laughs> ran in the gooby and knocked him down on the skating rink and broke his arm. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> oh, I love that. Whose arm was it? Bob's? Or was it? Bob's. Yeah. Bob's. Yeah. Broke his arm. I loved that we were there every day. We just went and we would just have fun and fun and we'd come in and get warmed up a little bit and go yep. back. But my brother, he was a really good skater and what he would do is he'd have a scarf and me and my sister would hang on, and he would whip us around. Yeah. No, no, no. And we never saw the broke our bones too bad, but I can remember we were flying. Oh, he would yeah. go, yeah, and me and my little sister would be. You get the ring yeah. going. Well, I like, like being that. on the tail end of the whip. Yes. So you get a tail end of the whip. Snow banks in them. That was fun. Sorry. It was. Yeah, and you used to be able to go right in the you go right in the firehouse and get warmed yes. up. I mean, they yeah, just left the door right open there. And Tilly was the there. Yeah, yeah, Tilly was always telling us what we could do and couldn't do. Yeah, yeah. 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 No, oh, I remember Tilly. Yeah, yeah. 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 I remember Tilly. Yeah, Tilly, I remember Tilly. There was a there was a gentleman who used to wear a pointed 
hat. He used to walk around Webster, West Ed Webster. Hey, but there's a different guy. Yeah. What was his name? Do we remember Long that guy? Decker. Lee Bullmacher. Is that what it was? That gentleman used to walk around West Webster for years. He <laughs> wore what an was old... his name? I could. Bullmacher? Yeah. Yeah. He had like a, a German hat with a point on it. Yeah, weird. Yeah. Uh, I remember that guy. <laughs> and he was, a, he was a little bit strange. I think he might have some something going on there. <laughs> He was a little guy. He was a Carter. Carter, he had a bike? I remember he... Something. He, yeah. Maybe I do remember. Remember that guy who used to walk around? <laughs> Mr. Yeah. Wallenbacker. Yeah. Dave, you didn't mention, too, uh, one of the things that changed when Dave lived right on the Four Corners of West Webster there. Um, they had a goat and a pig and... Yeah. You didn't yeah. want me to mention that. No, I didn't. We I didn't had a goat. <laughs> we brought the goat from Greece. My father bought a house in Greece. Our family was mostly from around the quake. In fact, my father and my grandfather both belonged to St. Paul Boulevard Fire Department and the exempts. But he bought a house that was paid for clothes during the Depression in Greece. And I lived there until I moved to West Webster. And we had a goat in the back field. We brought the goat, and we were the third door from the corner. There were Zimmers. Yeah. And, uh, Lewis's, Lewis's and then us. And we had this goat staked out in the side yard. And that goat, we didn't have to mow the lawn or fertilize it. The goat took care of both. <laughs> I can remember like St. Regis when they you know when they first did the church. I bet you go there now. 90% of the people wouldn't know there was another church there before the one that's there now. Yeah, my dad put the plumbing and heating business yes. in it, yeah. in the first one. Yeah, yeah. I, I was little, I pulled nails. That was my job, yeah. pulling nails out of boards. with like 10 or whatever. Yeah. Well, the West Webster Methodist Church, which seems old, is not the original one. No, yeah, right. no, 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 the old one was there that, before that. Right? Yeah. Before yeah. you guys could leave, um, Monday, we they got a donation from the church, and it's right in this room above the organ, and it's an etching of the original West Webster Church. It's beautiful. Yeah, yeah. it's from uh, Mr. Ta Taft, yeah. was the gentleman oh, yeah. did yeah, the artwork. That's my brother. That's beautiful. Yeah. So, yeah. That's you can right. look at it. Jack. Look at it. Jack Taft. I yeah. Think so. Jack Taft. Yeah. 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 Remember Taft. He's a real nice guy. Oh yeah. Yeah. But that was all. I think it was, uh, well, it was all a sheep farm. Yeah. Where the barn was, it was all sheep that they still have today. It was, uh, <coughs> what was it, the little guy in the corner? That, like, I don't think it was short people, but. Um, on the corner of what? Uh, right by St. Rita's, where you come out of the second driveway behind the. That's the one that owned the property. Yeah, there. robbers were there, and then the. Yeah, ro robbers were up at. Going the other guy yeah. up uh, <coughs> east of that. I can't remember. I can't think of that. That was, I can't think of his name now, but they, you know, that was all just open property back through yeah. there across the street. Cherry Hill Lane was yeah. Cherry Hill. It was all just yeah. cherry orchard up yeah. and over the hill. Yeah. Just solid. There was a little dumps, which only I can talk about it because nobody else believes me. <laughs> <laughs> Same with the yeah. post office. <laughs> right next to the, between the, uh, it's a church, a little, what's it's a it? little church, little church and uh, where the army driveway is in there, mm -hmm. that little right. open spot, it goes downhill right there, yep. that to me was always a little West Webster dumps. You, I used to yeah, sit there. It was by Billington's the, house there. Billington's, yes. next to Billington's. Yeah. Yep. Yep. And Bates and Dumps. Billington's and Baker's. Bakers yeah. Yeah. Across the street. Double house. Across the street. They're yeah. all doubles like that. Across the street was uh, Pitts and Jenny then Jenny and Glenn can talk about um, behind um, the uh, old machete store. Mm -hmm. yeah, they're next to the old firehouse. Um, they used to dump stuff back there. Well, you know how kids like to dig, you know? So they would be digging, you know, a hole down there doing something. And there was all these medicine bottles and oh, yeah. stuff that you would dig up. Um, yeah. that, I did dig I found, I found a coin. Was I was digging back there, <laughs> and that coin was a miller, and a miller was a coin it would give you for credit for the store in mm. West Webster. Yeah. Oh, really? It was a coin. Oh, yes. Cool. Um, token. It was a token, because oh, yeah. they didn't use money. 
People yeah. didn't have the money. Right. It was all honor system. Yeah. Just like, mm -hmm. just like yeah. Dave says, my dad, mm -hmm. you paid your bill when you got paid. Mm -hmm. That was the way it was, and people mm -hmm. trusted each other. Yeah. So it's just a story of something I dug up, and like you said, the medicine bottles yeah. and all that stuff they put back well, in there. Well, it's like our house. Oh, that's our, our yeah. house. We had uh, yeah. originally it was uh, my grandparents lived next on with us on the side mm -hmm. there, and where the garage is now in the house used to be. Uh, the whole kitchen and then the woodshed was after that and then the outhouses that you can still see the jag in the ground where the outhouse was on the side of the hill going down. I remember that. <laughs> <laughs> and then inside my grandfather's the same thing. They had a, I can remember the ice man coming, putting a yeah. chunk of ice in, come in through the woodshed and bag and drop that in like every four days, five days, whatever it was. Like but, that. Yes. Bob, you mentioned St. Rita's and you had some photos. Are you, are yeah, you they, they around? ran around somewhere. Oh, okay. here. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, those are just ones where they tore up. Dave yeah. could tell you too about some unusual um, living situations that people had, not necessarily in the okay. village, but of uh, West Webster, but um, somebody lived in an airplane fuelage. Right. Yeah, tell us about that. Oh, yeah. Herbie Vine. Herbie Vine. Next to the drive in theater. Yes. Yep. yep, they built a. Just the ground floor. Richard. Right. And and they, they, no, there was an airplane there. Yeah. That was their house. But I mean, that's all they did when they started that, the building. Wallenbeck's, they, they quit. Quit. Wallenbeck's the other end of Gravel Road. Yeah. 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 There's uh, Steve Wallenbeck, he was a friend of mine. He was the oldest son. There was uh, four kids all together. Sorry. And guess what they lived in? Well, Not a school bus, but a city bus. Yeah. It was only about as long as from where I'm sitting to that wall. Yeah. It had the motor in the back. It used to use an old Buick straight eight. That was taken out and that's where the oil tank was to keep it. And they lived in this with four kids. Oh gee. And they had a Oh, this is yeah. They had a table that folded down, a couple of them slept there. I think the parents one slept over the motor compartment in the back, and the other one's in the front. And they had a little heater in there. The thing was only eight foot wide. This was it. It was smaller than a camper. That's where they lived with four kids. Yeah. And he, he came from World War II, and he was a little shell-shocked. I, I helped him down there uh, dig his basement. He wanted to build a house. In fact, he did, and he, he made it like a fortress. And it had a, a dome on it out of an airplane for a skylight, and it was all solid concrete. We never got it finished, but next to it, you dug it out, so keep run the scoop, and I drove the tractor to dig out to the basement. Then water came and fell in before he got it built. But he, he used to ride around on his bicycle with his army hat on. But he was shell-shocked and all that from the war. Yeah, that, was, that was the gentleman was I was talking about. Yeah, that's okay, that's that was it. Wallenbeck was his Wallenbeck last name. name. I forget was. his first name, but the son was Steve. Wasn't there Steve Wallenbeck? Right? Steve yeah, Wallenbeck was, was the oldest son, yeah. and there was Kareem mm -hmm. and a brother, two brothers. She was the only girl. In fact, I went out with her a couple but of times. I, <laughs> 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 well, I never that? told Elaine that. <laughs> you said you wouldn't tell a lie today. So. Dave, where, where was the makeup place, make out place? When you Where were was the driving makeup yeah, place? I had a lot of places. Yeah, one driving, <laughs> the driving, you know, the one, the driving, the driving but, wait a minute, yeah. that's in West Webster, but remember I worked at Finn's? Yeah. I was behind Finn's between there and this place right out here. Yeah. But then Paul Hill, he recognized my car one night. <laughs> <laughs> Paul you wouldn't leave me alone. Everybody's car. <laughs> And who did they Paul, were? Paul, oh, yes, I had that. I remember I was number two on his cheaper. list at one time. Trying <laughs> to catch me. I would go home and he'd tell my Who's father. Who's that? Paul. Hill. Paul. Oh, Paul. <laughs> yeah, well, when I, I lived in the village. And I couldn't catch her. <laughs> I had a 55 Chevy with a Corvette engine in it. I got oh. pictures of it. And I worked at Finn's and Jittery Jim, you know who that was? His name was Stein. He was a chief of police yep. in the village. <laughs> And the guy, this is a villain talk, but what he did, I'd go home and he'd be parked in my driveway because he couldn't catch me. <laughs> Were you guys part of the uh, Webster gang, Webster Angels? I know the Cuyahoga, some of the Cuyahoga guys were. Joe Cuyahoga, he was an angel. Yeah. Now wait a minute. 
Yeah. Well, we had, I didn't, that was Webster's, I didn't talk about it. We had a club called the Webster Trailers Hot Rod Club. Yeah. And we met over here on South Avenue in Hamelinks. Hamelinks, yeah. and there was uh, myself, Jimmy Hammond, Dave Hamelink. Uh, we had about eight members, or more than that, no, about 15 members. And Mrs. Hamelink, was a was a member. She was our secretary. She kept the minutes. <laughs> we met over there. We used to go to drag races and yep. we had road rallies and all that stuff. Well, and we had a license you know. plate that was blue and white on the front of our cars in Webster Travelers. <laughs> and we most of us went to Edison Tech, like Lyle did and myself and <coughs> Marty did. And all Marty these Dale Murs, yeah. Murs Garage. Yeah. See, I think the Webster Angels was a, gen a little older than That was older than us. So that was, that was Joe Cuyaba. That was Mort Murs, you know, Bob. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right. My dad, Henry, I think, was in it. Henry Cuyaba. They mm -hmm. used to outrun the local police by turning their lights off and driving through Cuyaba's orchard. Mm -hmm. And they used to, right. Yeah. They steal, they steal. I heard of those. Yeah, they steal melons. <laughs> uh, Gordon Summers was on that team, yeah. too. I had a switch on my Gordon team. Summers. <laughs> Chevy. <laughs> Was on that, and when they used to the back invade the sea breeze, break and make they turn. They see Gordon yeah. Summer was yeah. a big guy yeah. when he was yeah. young, <laughs> and they, they were afraid of him. Yeah, <laughs> those were the Western Angels. That was before yeah. us. Yeah. Yeah, that was. Yeah. I know we're getting past time, but Lyle, um, you grew up right there on the Hatch Road in the Walters. The Walters yep. was what did you? Did we tell the truth? Yeah, he's got a whole bunch. Yeah, yes. can you tell the truth? Well, <laughs> you can, I know, but some stuff you can. Yeah. Yeah. I want to just show you guys before huh? you leave something. Oh, the bat? Yeah, like Les Webster had the, the Lewis. When you're talking about Lewis, I was thinking Lewis and Bancroft was the first basket company. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah. And you're it's right. in West Webster. Now, the one, our, my grandfather was the second uh, owner of the. Our property it was in '58. You, uh, Phelps uh, sold it to uh, Thomas Bancroft, and it's been Bancroft, and then his son owned it. So my grandfather bought it from him. And they always had this oh, Lewis this and Bancroft big, from way back basket company for a little while in West Webster. Yeah. Then it went to Shalott, and then it turned into something big. I guess, but it was it. That's wait a minute. Where did where did you live, MB? What was your I mean, on Ridge? What's your number? 550. 550, so that's where the the Lewis Bancroft was? I don't know. Oh. I don't, we never did find that out. Oh, okay. We in the backyard we had a we there's always a like a twelve by twelve square that always when it dried up in the or it got real hot in the summer, the rocks would show in. So we finally one year we dug it up to see what it was, and it was an old burn area like that and where they burned things and there was a bunch of pottery and toys and yeah. things like Someone that. But me. next to it was a hand well dug. Oh, so yeah. And they thought it was like a summer house. Oh. That summer. where they cooked in the summer yeah. and then had a well yeah. to drink yeah. out of it. We never, they got pictures of it here in okay. our older. Oh yeah. So I was wondering if that wasn't the basket company. Yeah, it might have been a little making stuff, who knows? Right. Yeah. Interesting. And it always is. It's, yeah. You can never find out. Well, I want to thank you guys for coming oh, yeah. and sharing. Yep. It's really been grand. It was. And, uh, yeah. 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 And we like it. Oh, so, yeah. one of the things is this is Preservation Month, National Preservation Month. So, one of the reasons also we bring people in is called oral history. <laughs> you know? <laughs> Yep. We get the stories yep. right from you. Yep. So thank you. Oh gosh. Oh. oh. Yeah. 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 Bob, there's a thank you card. Jan, right by your foot. Oh. I got it. Oh. Okay. You got it. You got it. Drop some candy. You move and I'll grab. Oh, thank you. Lyle, I think this fell out for you. Wow. Thank you so much. <laughs> I put this in my archive. Yes, I know. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so if you guys, especially the West Webster Firemen, I've got oh, look at this. West Webster Firemen Special Edition and the Webster Herald from 1942, and the whole page advertises your carnival. And Al Sinkowitz and I are working, we're going to work yeah. on getting a copy for you. There's also a napkin here from the Methodist Episcopal Church dated 1896. Where was it? Wow. 
in West Webster. And these are some of the old West Webster businesses around it. Mm. They had, they had great some strawberry they were So you guys can take a look before yeah, I put it away. We're the third away. one from the <laughs> second one. <laughs> <model. laughs> third now Very cool. yeah. from the church just west Not of that. that. And they always had a great strawberry festival every June. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, nice. So they had chimpanzees. Yeah. Aerial, Don't get up here aerial aerial people, you know, so thank you guys for coming. I remember, and when, blue, you. Right. Have you ever faced that I remember so when they had the picnics in What's your first name? Beverly. Beverly. And, and, and your last back. name? Is that oh, right? Yeah. Yeah. So so yeah. 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 Just your face looks so familiar to me. They had the fire hoses. Mm -hmm. And there was almost like a couple more, yeah, but they would blast water. Water ball. Water ball. I don't know what year you guys, uh, the Western Fire that. Department, when we started at the Fireman's Field was 1938. Was it? Yeah. Right, right, Rick? <laughs> it, it, it I don't quite remember. <laughs> 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 I mean, Wait a minute. My sister. I think that might not be. Right. No, that's true. That's when they bought the property. And they they might have bought the property. They had their first carnival there. I was born in 37. They were still yeah. having it out here, though. Well, yeah. I don't know. I'm just telling you. I'm just telling you. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> David has a picture of the um, turkey party when they had the live turkeys. Oh. And everybody's up there. Yeah. And um, there's Earl Schlegel flag. and Tilly yep. and yeah. a whole bunch of them. Um, and they're, you know, they slaughtered the, the, the turkeys themselves from right. yes. Jenkins. Jenkins. Jenkins, had them. Jenkins had a yeah. turkey farm mm -hmm. down at the bottom of the hill right. and gravel road. And they yeah. brought up the turkeys and they slaughtered them and they put them in like a funnel and I don't know if they cut their head off or something. Whatever, and then they put them in water and all that stuff. Yeah, they had a big barrel, you know, at the fire. Yeah. And <laughs> they did all that themselves yeah. before yeah. they got them from Tobin's. Yeah. <laughs> One time they came with a truck with Tobin's. We, had two trucks come from Syracuse, I think it was Tobin's, <laughs> and somebody lost, we were supposed to take the trucks back the next day. The, the drivers bought them. But anyway, they lost the keys to one of them. <laughs> Remember that? <laughs> no, I <laughs> And uh, <laughs> Dwayne Crum was a locksmith, and he worked about six hours on that thing and figured out to get a key, made a key to fit it, so he could take the truck back. Yeah. All I can remember is sitting there with money downstairs on the third wheel in the basement. And all I saw was hands, you know, change, making change. $20 goes, $10, $5 goes. That's all I can remember all night long. Yeah. And my wife would come over to the Heritage House with a drink. <laughs> I remember Dave couldn't talk the next day. No. Yeah, I mean, he just was because yeah. on the wheel. Yeah. And I ran the wheel upstairs. Yeah. Always yeah. talking, you know. The basement, the basement was just a madhouse. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Can I say something out of from an outsider? I was never. I'm 79. I moved here, and I've enjoyed these Wednesdays and Sundays. And I thank everyone thank that did it. Really, I learned so much about this area. Great. Well, and we we learned so much from all that you brought. Oh, well, we had no idea. So thank yes. you very much for doing that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and as Dave said, come to the firehouse and you get to make arrangements to get in. But they have done a beautiful job with the museum at the firehouse. Yeah. So it's well worth if you would like Webster and West Webster history. We're getting there. Thank you, sir. Yeah, I was up there with Dave. Yeah.